Controlled nuclear fusion power is yet elusive dream. When two light atomic nuclei come together to form a heavier one, the energy is released. All stars are fueled that way. Needless to say, to create little sun on Earth is exceedingly difficult. Not only that, but the temperature would have to be around 10 times higher than at sun's core, because obviously we don't have so much fuel as the sun does, and the reaction itself would have to be a different one. One of the proposed ways to achieve that is to create a magnetic confinement device. Two main candidates are Tokamake and Stellarator. Let's see what they share in common and how they differ. In order to overcome the electrostatic repulsion between atomic nuclei, they must have a sufficient speed or temperature. For example, for a deuterium-tritium reaction it is 1 billion kelvins. However, that could be lowered by two reasons. First, when plasma is heated up to a certain temperature, it is an average temperature, meaning some particles are cooler and some are hotter. And second, due to the quantum tunneling effect, there is a non-zero possibility that nucleus can overcome electrostatic barrier even with insufficient energy. I mentioned that briefly in my other video. The required temperature would be around 100-150 million degrees Kelvin. Apparently no material can endure such heat. So both Tokamake and Stellarator use magnetic field to hold plasma in a vacuum. Magnetic field doesn't slow down or speed up charged particles but only bends their trajectories. Magnetic and electric fields are in essence two sides of the same phenomenon. Electric current creates magnetic field, while alternating magnetic field creates electric current. With that said, the idea is the following. We take a solenoid, which is a coil with a tightly packed wire. Electric current would create a nice uniform magnetic field inside it. Positively and negatively charged particles would travel in a helical way, plasma is confined and not touching the walls. All is well, except that we can't make an infinitely long solenoid. Natural idea is to bend it to create a donut shape, this is called torus in mathematics. Here where the problems start. Now the magnetic field is strong on the inside and weaker on the outside. Positively charged particles will move upward, while negatively downward. The confinement is lost. Fortunately, there is a solution. We just have to twist the magnetic lines. Every line now is somewhere on the upper side and somewhere on the lower side. That means particles would move somewhere upward, somewhere downward, thus creating a macroscopic equilibrium. In Tokamake, the name comes from Russian abbreviation toroidal chamber with magnetic coils, this is done by inducing an electric current in plasma itself. The current creates magnetic field around itself, which twists the resulting field. This approach is somewhat easy, but has a drawback. At some point we wouldn't be able to maintain ever-increasing current level. That's why Tokimake cannot operate continuously. The other way to create the twist is to use another external magnetic field. That's how the confinement problem is solved in Stellarator. The name comes from Latin stella, star. Unlike in Tokamake, here the plasma itself is twisted. Without induced current, Stellarator can operate continuously. Although they look very favorable, they haven't got much attention only until recently. That's because without modern computing power, it was impossible to find the right magnetic configuration, which can be quite intricate. Don't be fooled by this simplicity though. In reality, there are many, many more subtle yet crucial problems with both configurations. That was only an acquaintance to the physics of nuclear fusion. Until next time, stay curious!